All right. What did you put for number one, class? Three to the six equals 729. You lassoed. You started with the base. You went around. Who got that? Perfect. Did you get this for number two? Did you get this for number three? Okay, so then these are in exponential, so we need to go to log form. So you're going to start by writing log. Did you get this for number four? Okay, good. I was testing you. I just thought you were saying yes to everything I was putting up there. Hold on. That was a test. You all passed. So you start with the base. You go around. It's log base 2 of 512 equals 9. Did you get that? And then for 5, you start at the base, you go around, log base 8 of 36 equals x plus 3. Okay, we're not actually solving, but if you wanted to, you would just subtract 3, and you'd have log base 8 of 36 minus 3 equals x. And then here, log base 49 of 7 equals 1. You got all those correct. All right, very good. We're going to use this skill today. Um, for evaluating logs, we'll also be graphing logs. Before we get to that, I'm going to pass back your skill checks, and I'll have the key up here so that you can see how you did. And then we'll start the notes. We are doing two different things today with logs, all right? Be sure you're on the side that looks like this, not the graph side. We're doing graph. Second. Um, so we're we're moving from exponentials to logarithms, and we're doing two different things with logs today. We're evaluating or finding the value of them, and then we're going to switch our minds over to graphing them. Right. So the first thing we're doing is the evaluating part, finding the value. So like in a minute, I'll show you how to figure this value out. Log base 6 of 216 has an actual value, and I'm going to show you how to find that without needing a table or a calculator or anything. Like, well, you might kind of need that. Um, one thing I want to point out to you, though, we have two very common logs that are so common that they get their own special sort of notation. If you ever see something like this, where it just says log x and there's no base written, it's understood that that's a base of 10. And this is called the common log because this is how we count. You count up to 10, and then you do what? We start over, all right? So that's the base of our, our number system is base 10. Um, the other common log we have that's very frequent is log base e. It's so frequent that it gets this whole other thing, ln x, all right? So if you see ln x, that just means it's still a log, but it's got a base of e, and we know e is approximately 2.7. So we'll use those sometimes um, in this lesson. Here's how we are going to find the value of these logs. Um, the first one is log base 6 of 216. Yesterday we learned the lasso trick, and we're going to learn the lasso here. But what's up with this? That's kind of weird. Like, I can't do lasso yet. There's no equals anything, right? Um, but what we're trying to find is, well, okay, so think about it like this. Log base 6 of 2 at 16 is what? We don't know. Okay. And when we don't know something in math, what do we put? An x, right? So we could really put log base 6 of 216 equals x, and now we absolutely can do a lasso. You start with the base, you loop around, you say 6 to what? 6 to the x equals 216. And even this one, you might be full like, well, we didn't really gain any ground there, Ms. F. I still know what, what x is supposed to be. But we know how to rewrite both sides with the same base, right? And then we said the exponent's equal. So I'm look, it looks like I'm working towards what base on both sides? 6. So that's like your first clue that you want the right side to look like 6 to the something. Guess how many times 6 times itself gives you 216? 3. 216 can be rewritten as 6 to the 3, and now that they have the same base, you can drop them off and set the exponents equal and solve this. 
I want you to try this problem, log base five, one over 25. It's okay if you get stuck in the middle, but at least set it equal to, to X and do your lasso, and then think hard for a few seconds about the next step. You don't have to get it, but just sort of mentally grunt a little bit and try it. this far. 5 to the x equals 1 over 25. Okay. Who got farther than that? But don't tell us what you did. Is it farther? Okay. Um, what we're trying to do, remember, is rewrite both sides with the same base. Looks like I'm going to want 5 as my base on the right-hand side. Uh, I don't have a 5 over there. I do have a 25, though. What's the relationship between 5 and 25? 5 times 5, right? So I can at least start by rewriting 25. Even if I don't know what to do next, like I'm just feeling my way around the problem, I can sort of do that. The problem here is that it still doesn't look like this one did, where it was a base to something equals a base to something I'm closer. What is this rule? What's going on right here? Negative exponent rule, okay? Now that rule is easy to recognize when it's already negative. Okay, then I'm gonna switch to a different color because it's a different problem. Like if I already gave you five to the negative two, your brain would go, ah, oh, negative exponent rule. We have to flip it and make the exponent positive. So you see, it's still the negative exponent rule. It's just you have to be going this direction. That's something you have to be get as comfortable as possible with and be able to recognize. So then I can rewrite over here as 5 to the x equals 5 to the negative 2. But now they both have the same base. I can drop the bases and set the exponents equal. So x equals negative 2. But who got that start to finish all by themselves? That was so good. Who's your teacher? You're doing an excellent job. Um, this problem right here, what am I going to do first to get started so that I can lasso? Okay, set it equal to x. Then what's another way I could write log base e? This is just a random question, by the way. It's not part of the problem. Ln e, right? Ln. Ln, or just Ln, Ln of that. I like it, degenerous. I just get that. I'm gonna use that joke all unit. Sorry, I just discovered that. I apologize. No, it's coming. All right. So we are gonna lasso e to the x equals this, and that's all fine. But that's not a base e, not currently on the right hand side. But it's kind of like that problem we did in the warm up. I want e to an exponent. That's what I'm going for. But right now I have cube root of e on the right-hand side. How can I write that with an exponent instead? How do you write a cube root? How do we do the square root in the warm-up? One half. So what do you think a cube root is? One third. Mm -hmm. One third. So e to the x equals e to the cube root. Here's how to write cube root with a rational, meaning fraction, exponent. Lots of tiny baby things to remember. And so now that the bases are the same, we can just take their exponents and set them equal. You try that last problem on your own. So you had to recognize the negative exponent rule here again. You set it equal to x. You lasso e to the x equals 1 over e to the 5. But this is negative exponent, so to rewrite it like this. Okay, who got that already? Okay. Um, I don't, if you're having a hard time remembering the negative exponent rule, I would love to spend some time to show you where that rule comes from, but I don't want to spend class time right here because about half of you get it, half of you are stuck. 
So if you, if you want to see where that rule comes from, if you think that will help you remember it, I can talk about that after the lesson, okay, after I pass out the homework. Because it's like a real thing. It's not arbitrary, like, you know, just trying to make you miserable by making you memorize some random rule. It's a real thing. Okay, so that was everything on that side of the page, right? We are going to switch our mental gears to graphing. And what I want you to do, this, this space was left intentionally blank. We're going to use it, the whole space. So what I would like for you to do is divide this into four spaces. We're going we're gonna to write some stuff. Do you remember what did I tell you the other day is the relationship between exponential and logarithms? They're what's of each other? Inverses, right? They're inverses. So I'm going to use that concept to show you, to talk to you about how to graph logs. So if you want to just make a note somewhere, logs, just to remind yourself, logs and exponentials are inverses. And so we're going to start by reviewing what we already know about logs and then use that information to generate our, uh, use what we already know about exponentials and use that to generate information about logs. So exponentials we've already learned, we've been quizzed on them. So this is review information. Do you remember the basic form of an exponential equation? Y equals e to the x. Okay. And we had two different scenarios for graphs. The first one was when b was bigger than 1. Okay. And we had some three basic things that were part of every exponential graph. Do you, can you give me one of them? Zero, what about zero, 1? Has a point at zero one. Give me another thing. What? One b, whatever the base was. Okay. One comma b, and in this case b is bigger than one. So if I go one and then b is bigger than one, it's up here somewhere. This is an increasing graph. And what was the third thing that we would graph? Y equals zero. Perfect. The horizontal asymptote. And that's increasing as x goes to positive infinity. And then the other graph we had was still y equals b to the x, but b was less than 1, but still positive. That means it's greater than 0. And we still had y equals 0, blah, 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 blah. We still had 0, 1. But this time our point was our 1b was below the 1, so it was a decreasing graph. going to use these things to generate the log graphs. Okay, so now we're going to talk, this is our new information for today, logarithms. And the basic form for that is y equals log base b of x. And we'll talk about when b is greater than 1 first. Log base b of x for b bigger than 1. Inverse functions are quite literally where x and y are reversed. Okay, they're, they replace each other. So using that information, when exponentials had a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, what do you think logarithm graphs are going to have? If you're switching x and y, you have x equals 0. What kind of line is that? Vertical, right? So instead of having a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0, this logarithm, which is the inverse, is going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. And 
then instead of a point at zero, one, what do you think this graph is going to have? One, zero. That's going to be on the x-axis somewhere. And instead of a point 1B, what is this graph going to have? B1. Mm -hmm. Plus B1. And for this graph, B is bigger than 1. This, this dot is at 1. So if B is bigger than 1, it's to the right somewhere of 1. So this graph looks like this. Please notice it's still increasing as x goes to infinity, just like the exponential did. So then the second graph where b is less than 1, so it's still log base b of x. b is less than 1 but bigger than 0 because it's positive. It's going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. It's going to have a point at 1, 0. It's going to have a point at B1, but this time B is less than 1. So what that means is this point that I just plotted is equal 1. So if B is less than 1, it's going to be between B0 and there, and it's going to go up 1. So this is the basic form of that graph. Okay, still decreasing as X goes to infinity for B less than 1. And the reason why I sort of went through the trouble of generating the log information from the exponential information is because when you get to a quiz or a test or your homework or something and I just give you log to graph, your brain doesn't really work with that very well. You understand this form, v to the x. If you can do this, you just do the opposite for that, okay? It's easier than just having to memorize all four of those situations. Really, at the minimum, if you could remember this, you should be able to generate the other three. I mean, in an ideal, perfect world, that's what would happen. So what we're going to do here is just two transformations of log graphs, okay? Uh, this first one, log base 3, x plus 1 plus 2. Um, by the by, a few things. I'm not going to be drawing these to scale because... These are really, really small up here on the smart board. My eyes are really, really old, so I can't look closely. And I have man hands, which means I can't do little things on the, on the graph, okay? I can't even change my own jewelry. These little ones, I have to go pay the lady to do it because my fingers are too big. So, man hands. Is this going to be drawn to scale? That's my point. No, you're not going to freak out. You're going to do it right on your graph and just know that I estimated up here. We all heard that? Estimated. All right. So... Basic graph is this, log base 3 of x. We're going to graph that first, and then we'll do the transformation. So log base 3 of x has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Give me, what else does it have? 0, 1? 1, 0. It's got a point at 1, 0. And it's got a point at 1, I'm sorry, B1. But what is B here? 3. So it's really got a point at 3, 1. The graph looks, this is the basic shape of the graph. And then there are two transformations. And now transformations will happen just like they always happen. See this x plus 1 with the parentheses around it? So that 1 goes with the x. That's an insider's lie. That means it's going to go left 1. And then the 2 on the outside means up 2. Now on our exponential graph, So on our exponential graphs, the horizontal asymptote would move only when there was what kind of shift? Okay, up and down, right, for exponentials. But this is vertical, so it's only going to move if we have a what? What did you say, Brianna? Left to right, okay. And we do, we have a left one. So 
this right here, left one, the points are going left one up two. That is not accurate. Okay. Just a basic form. Um, can I start talking about the next one? Does anyone, is anyone catching up on that one? One thing I want to point out to you about the second function is there are no parentheses with that x minus 2. So this is something that's going to trip you all up. Here, the x was with the 1, and we knew that because of the parentheses. Here, that minus 2 is a vertical shift. It's not an insider's lie because there's no what's there. Parentheses, okay? So real quickly, let me show you the difference. If parentheses were here, that would be a horizontal shift. That would be an insider's lie. There's no parentheses which is how you know that that minus 2 is a vertical shift. So be careful about that. So take a minute and try that one. I know we'll talk about it. Oh, I forgot to record that. <laughs>